And on the market front, Joe, as we close out 2021, chip stocks have been on a roll. The uh, SOXX Semiconductor ETF just hit an all-time high back to its inception 20 years ago. But will the good times keep on rolling into the new year? Josh Lipton joins us now uh, with that story. Josh, what's the verdict? So, Kaylee, you mentioned one ETF. Let's have a look at another, the SMH. That's another ETF that tracks the chips. And it's been on a roll. It just closed at a new record on Monday. It's up about 15% now in the past three months. It's up more than 45% so far this year. Under the hood, you have some big names making big moves. NVIDIA, now that one is poised for a monthly decline. But pull back the chart, you'll still see it's up nearly 140% in 2021. AMD, also up big, nearly 70% 70% this year. Broadcom, Applied Materials, Lamb Research, all trading at all-time highs here. Demand has been strong, what some frankly call off the charts. On earnings calls, chip executives sounding broadly very positive about business trends. And governments around the world now increasingly recognize chips as a true national security priority. But Bernstein's Stacey Rasgon tells me he is getting a bit nervous here. Yes, shortages provided a tailwind for this sector. Chip makers have been selling whatever they could make. But Rasgon says there is a growing risk that some customers have now purchased more than they actually need and won't order as much from here. Rasgon says his checks indicate that is particularly true for autos and PCs. So where to commit capital? Rasgon tells me he has buys on what he considers safety plays like Broadcom with its attractive valuation, he says, in record backlog. And secular growth stories, too, like Qualcomm and also NVIDIA, where he says results couldn't be better. Kayla, back to you. Well, Josh, I'm curious what analysts say about how much of the attractiveness of some of this sector is based on the promise of $52 billion in funding from Washington that has been waiting in the wings for some time, uh, but still has yet to become law. That is the CHIPS Act. And I'm wondering what you're hearing about whether the industry believes that will happen or is now operating with a foregone conclusion that perhaps it's not going to happen. It seems to be one of those very rare issues where lawmakers on both sides of the political aisle, and you would know this better, Kayla, but it seems to be some growing consensus there um, that we do need to put more money, time, and effort into ramping up our own domestic manufacturing. Now, that does cost a lot of money. I mean, you know these headlines of what they're talking about, but just to put that in perspective, you know, if you're going to build a modern ship facility, if you're going to build and fill that, you could be looking at $15 billion for one plant. And then after you build and fill it, you have these very interesting conversations. Who's going to lead that plant? Who's going to staff it? That brings up pretty complex public policy questions, I think, about uh, education and immigration. So it's complex, but it does feel like there's a lot of lawmakers on both sides who feel like we have to be less reliant on foreign sources for chip manufacturing going forward.